Hi everyone, I'm Angie and welcome to Make It Monday. July is a National Watercolor Month. To celebrate that, we're going to paint a simple watercolor landscape today and this is what we're going to paint. So I'm going to set this off to the side. We're going to get started. So to start with, you have a piece of watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is the brand of paper that I use. You can buy it at pretty much any craft store um, and you can get quite a few sheets in a pad. And the watercolor paper that you use does make a difference. Um, if you use an inexpensive paper, the paint is not going to blend as well together. Um, a lot of times the paper will soak up the color really quickly. So you want to make sure that you use a good quality watercolor paper. Um, and like I said, this is pretty inexpensive. It cost me $6.75 for a big pad of paper. So, Okay, so I cut your piece of paper a little bit larger than the finished size that we're going to have. And the reason I did that is because when you use a lot of water with watercolor paper, it has a tendency to buckle. So we need to actually tape our watercolor paper down. So what I just have um, a hard board here that I use to tape mine down and then just some blue painters tape. So we're just going to take and tape this right down onto the board and what's going to happen is that is going to keep it from buckling as we add a lot of water to this paper. So I just tape it down on all four sides and I just go in a little bit on the edge to tape that down. So you can either tape it like to a heavy piece of cardboard, you can tape it to your tabletop. Um, just make sure that whatever's on your tabletop is fairly sturdy. Um, let's see, what else could you tape it to? Pretty much a heavy piece of cardboard. So like even the back of this tablet, you know, just a piece of cardboard like that will work. You just want to tape it down to something so that it keeps it from buckling. I like this hardboard. It allows me to pick it up and move it. Okay, so I've got my paper all taped down. The next thing I want to do is I want to get my paper really wet. So I use just a spray bottle and I spray it down really well. And the reason you want to get the paper wet is you want that color to float. We want this color to blend together. And then to paint, I'm just using a flat paintbrush. I also have a, two containers of water. I have one container that has dirty water and one container that has clean water. So that if I want to add water into my color, it's not going to affect um, the color that I'm putting it in with. So I'm just going to take and spread out this water and you can see I've got quite a bit of water on there but that's what I want. You want a lot of water and some of this is going to soak into the paper but it's also going to let our colors blend together. I've got a little bit much on the bottom here so I'm just going to take my paper towel and sop that up just along the edges so that I don't end up with a huge mess outside of the paper. Okay, we are going to paint with something a little different this time. So you can do this with just a standard set of watercolors like this. This is just my set of watercolors. The reason I chose what we're using today is because I wanted a bigger variety of color. So as many of you know, I am a card maker and I own a lot of ink pads. So we are actually going to paint with the re-inkers for this particular brand of ink pads. Um, it's a distress ink. Um, and the re-inkers are very vibrant, so the color that we're going to get is going to be very vibrant. You can also, um, there are liquid watercolors that you can purchase um, if you like this technique. Or again, you can just use your regular watercolors and then just mix the colors that you want. And you will still get a very nice effect with that. 
So what I've done is taken a little drop of this reinker and put it in a plastic palette so that I, it's easy for me to work with. And it also gives me a space in the center where I can blend my colors or add water to the colors to lighten them up. This particular brand of reinker, these inks are very water reactive. Not all ink pad reinkers will work for this. So if you want to, if you have something like that at home and you want to use that, um, make sure that you try it out on a piece of watercolor paper first because not all inks are created equal. This particular brand is a very water reactive ink. So we've got our paper wet and we're going to start laying our color down. So as you can see from this, there is like a background layer and then the hills are a foreground layer. And what we're going to do is paint the background layer first. So it's going to basically be a watercolor wash all the way down the page. So I'm going to start with my first color, which is an orange color. And I'm going to take some of it into the center of my thing here, and I'm going to add some water to it. I just want to lighten it up just a little bit. I don't want it to be quite as intense. So I'm going to start laying that color on. I'm just going to brush it across. And I always can come in and add more color, but I can't take it away. So it's better to start out light. And so when you're doing this, as you're going down the page, about halfway down is where you want your blues to start. So I, gotta, I have to watch myself so I don't go too far down with these colors. So I'm going to move on to my yellow next. And this is kind of a really dusty yellow. And it's not very dark, so I'm actually using almost a full concentration of this. And so where they meet, I'm going to blend with just my brush. And I'm going to pick up just some clean water, and I'm going to continue to blend that. Now, I want my orange to be a little darker, so I actually can come back in and add some of that orange. And then what I'll do is I'll actually tip my board a little bit to encourage those colors to run. And you can kind of see the orange bleed down into, into that yellow area. Hopefully, I'm going to move that forward a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to set that back down, and next I'm going to move into my pink. And again, this pink is pretty light, so I actually can use it almost full force. And it's kind of fun to blend it into the yellow because you'll get kind of an orange color that way. So don't be afraid to push that into the yellow a little bit to get a little bit of a blend. And then I'm going to rinse my brush, and again I'm going to pick up just a little bit more because I want just a little bit more just straight pink shade there. And again, I can pick it up this way and a lot, you know, push those colors the other direction. And that is why we wanted to get our page all the way wet before we started. Okay, now I'm going to start working into my blues. And I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to add a little bit of water to that because I want to lighten it up a little bit to start with. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit more concentrated color. And again, I'm going to tip my board a little bit to encourage those to blend a little bit. And if your paper seems like it's getting dry, you can always give it another spritz of water or just get some water on your paintbrush. You know, as you're moving down, it might start to dry out. So you always can come in with a clean brush and pick up some clean water and just add some water down here if you feel like your page is getting kind of dry, which towards the very bottom mine is. So I'm going to just paint some straight water back on there just to make sure that I've got enough water for everything to blend together. Okay, I've got four shades of blue here. So again, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit, and I'm going to come in. 
And I like to come in just a little bit below the previous color and then bring it up into that color. And add just a touch more of that. And again, I'm going to pick my board up and try and push those colors to bleed together a little bit. All right, two more shades of blue. All right, picking up this next one, which is pretty dark. I need to leave a little bit of room at the bottom for my darkest shade. So again, I'm going to pick my board up. Try and push those colors together a little bit. And this is what's nice about having it on a movable surface is that you can pick it up and move it. Okay, now I'm going to come back in with my really darkest shade, which this is quite intense. So again, I'm going to come in and push that color. Pick up my board and encourage that to blend into the other colors. just a touch more at the bottom here it kind of blended out and this is going to dry back a little bit lighter um, watercolor always dries back so it won't be quite as vibrant as this but like I said you can always go back in and add more color you can't take it away and in fact before we stop this section let this dry I'm going to add just a little bit more orange up here my orange is kind of blend it out a little bit in those corners. So I'm just going to pick up just a tad more orange. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then I'm going to get some clean water just so that right at the, I don't want to end up with a line there. So I want to encourage that yellow, that orange to move. And I'm going to just tip my board the other direction so that that runs just a little bit. A little bit more clean water here. All right, I got my yellow moving a little bit too much. And if something is where you don't want it, you can always soak up a little bit extra with your paper towel. I'm gonna pull just a little bit more yellow here. Because this part of the sky is gonna stay like this. So however it ends up, right now is what it's going to be. So it's okay to come back and work that sky a little bit up here, but your blues are going to have another covering over them, so I wouldn't worry about those too much. Just a little bit of pink. It's, you can always go back in and play, just make sure that the area is completely wet when you do that, so that, again, you don't end up with lines. Okay, we are going to just leave this set and air dry. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can speed it up with a hair dryer. But for this one, I'm going to let it air dry. So we're going to let this dry, and I'll be back to show you how to add the hills next. Welcome back. We are ready to move on to the next step, which is to add the hills into our watercolor landscape. So this, see how this dried back a little bit so it's not quite as intense a color? And that's exactly what we want. So to add the hills, what I did is I kind of sketched this out and I am no by any means any artist. Um, basically you're going to have one hill that's going to come this way and then your next hill is going to come this way and then so if you want to sketch out on a piece of paper, just so you kind of have an idea what you're kind of aiming for, and I'm just going to set that next to me. So to start with, because our paper is really dry, if we just go and put straight color on there, it's just going to soak right into the paper. And I want this color to move a little bit, but I don't want it to move up into this area. So I'm basically going to paint a line with water where I want that first hill to be. So I want a little bit of my blue 
of this light blue to show. So I'm going to start just a little bit beyond that. And I'm just going to paint basically a line with some water. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow my color to, to move, but it's not going to go beyond where that water stops. So I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush, and I want to paint a little bit down from that line that I created. And it's a little hard to see it. It just needs to be kind of a general line. So I'm going to come in with my first color of blue, which is my lightest color. So the darkest color is going to be in the foreground, the very bottom. The lightest color is going to be at the very top. So now I'm going to come in, and because I put that water there, it's definitely not going to go above where I want it to go. And I put the water in below because I need it to blend down below. I don't want to end up with like a solid line. And this first till is going to be pretty faint. So now I'm going to get some clean water on my brush and I'm just going to kind of drag that down. And I can go back over this. And I'm just kind of wiggling my brush because you want just a, you don't want it to be super straight. And I'm just picking up color kind of on the corner of my brush. And I'm just going to kind of drag that down. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more color. So you want that color up on that edge. And then you want to kind of blend it out after that point. So again, I'm going to get some clean water. And I'm just going to kind of blend this down. And so you've got your first very faint hill line there. All right, to speed this up for purposes, I am going to dry this so that we can go on to the next hill. Uh, what this is is a heat gun, but a hair dryer works great. doesn't need to be toasty toasty dry but dry enough that your color isn't going to blend together. Okay so we're ready for the next hill. So I'm going to kind of look at my drawing that I did over here and again I'm going to go in and paint my line with some clean water. So I want this other hill to kind of come over the top of that one. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to drag it down just kind of where I want it to go. And like I said, this doesn't need to be exact. You're just trying to make a stop point so that your color doesn't go beyond that. And so again, I'm painting with just clean water down a little ways from that first line. All right, now I'm going to pick up my second darkest color. And I'm using the color just straight from, I'm not adding a bunch of extra water because it's going to hit some water when you get on here. So then we're going to come with this here. And I'm going to pick up some more color because I want this to be darker up here. And it's okay that it's bleeding a little bit there. That's going to make it look like trees. So as you add color to this, don't be afraid to kind of wiggle your brush and make things a little uneven. And then again, I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to blend that out. I'm going to pick up some more clean water and I'm just going to blend this out so that it blends out into the bottom. If I don't do this, um, once it dries or even if you heat it with a hair dryer, you're going to get a definitive line in there, and I don't want that. I want it to blend. And I want this up here to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to go back in, just picking up some color kind of on the corner of my brush. And I'm just adding a little bit more color in there. 
and then I'm going to just blend that out. Okay, so we've got our second hill in there. So again, we're going to dry. Okay, down to the next one. And this is kind of the same process as you add these hills in. You're just going to put the hill in and then you can either let it air dry or you can come in, like I said, with a hair dryer or a heat tool. Okay, so my next hill is going to go down here and I want it to kind of dip down a little bit. So I'm just going to drag that down a little bit and then bring it up. And again, that's just my waterline to stop the paint from going any farther beyond that. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up my third darkest color. And I'm going to come in and start adding that. I want to make sure I blend that out. I don't want to end up with a line there. Get a little bit of clean water on my brush. And you can always go in with your paper towel if you feel like you got too much water in there. Just kind of blot. And it's okay for it to blend into the color below it. Like I said, you just don't want a definitive line when it dries. So I'm going to come back in here. I want this just a little bit darker on that top edge there. And again, I'm going to kind of wiggle my brush a little bit. Try to make that a little bit uneven. Pick up a little bit more here because I want this to be a little bit darker on that top edge. And then again, I'm going to take and blend it out down below. Alright, again we're going to dry it. Last one, we're going to do some clean water here. And then some clean water all the way down to the bottom. We're going to pick up our real darkest shade and we're going to add that in. like this bottom one to be really dark. Okay. And we're going to dry that.
Okay. So there, we've got all of our hills in place, and that completes the landscape part. I just want to make sure this is dry, and I want it to cool a little bit, and then we're going to pull the tape off. So when you pull tape off, you want to pull it back on itself. I'm going to pull this down a little bit so you can see. So I'm just going to pull the tape back on itself, and then it won't rip the paper then. So you just want to peel it back right along there. And it's okay that it bled underneath the tape because we're going to um, trim, it up, trim it down anyway so that it'll fit in a 5x7 frame. piece to pull off. Okay, so our landscape is all finished. All right, I am going to go trim this down to five by seven and then we'll be back to add the finishing touches to this. Okay, so we're ready to continue on. I have trimmed my piece down to five by seven so that it'll fit into a five by seven frame. I have die cut um, out of black paper. This is a pine tree die cut that I have. I did try um, on one of my practice ones to draw a tree. I am not an artist, so I resolved to this. So you can add this on there or choose to leave it off, whatever you prefer, um, however you like that. I'm going to add this on. I've got, um, it's called a two-way glue pen. It's basically liquid glue in a pen. Um, and this works really good because this die cut's a little bit delicate, so I can just kind of dab the glue onto the die cut. And I'm working on top of a piece of um, wax paper so that if I get glue back behind there, it's not going to stick onto my cutting mat. So I'm just going to dab the glue all over the back. And you can use white liquid glue too, um, whatever you prefer to add your die cut piece. And I like to have a tweezers on hand. It just helps me pick things up. Okay, so I'm just going to position my tree off to the right side of my watercolor landscape. And I'm just going to press it down in place. And I'm just going to hold it there for a little bit. Trying to make sure my hands are a little messy. You don't want to get it too... Whoa! That is not sticking very well. Let's try that again. Okay. Just needs to set up just a little bit. I am going to take, I'm trying to find something here. We're going to set our board over the top of it just enough to hold it in place for a little bit. I'll talk a little bit about the birds while I'm waiting for that to dry on there. Um, so I added a couple little birds up in my sky. Um, and all I did, um, I drew them with a black fine point Sharpie marker. And so I'm just going to use my little scrap piece of paper here. But if you think about an arch, and then just a little arch off to the side. And an arch, and a little arch off to the side. And so that's all you need to do to make your birds. If you're uncomfortable just going directly onto your piece, you can draw it on there with a pencil first, and then go over the top of it with your marker. So that is how the birds are going to be done. Pick this up. Yep, now it's down there. Okay, so I'm going to add my birds here. And I kind of want them coming in from the left. So I'm going to wing it. So I'm going to just do a half circle line and then a little line. And I'm going to put the other one forward of that. Just a half circle line. And a 
partial line off the side. And so my trees are in there. So that is it for our project this month. Um, in August, there will be no Make It Monday. We're going to take a month off. Um, we just have a lot of stuff going on at the library with the book sale and different things like that. So um, look for Make It Monday again in September. So thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this watercolor landscape project and we'll see you again in September. Thanks. Bye-bye.